Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This time, I'm going to show you how to get through the game's final dungeon, Ganon's Tower. The requirement to enter Ganon's Tower is that you must have all seven crystals from all seven Dark World dungeons. Other than that, there are no prerequisite side quests. Starting from the entrance to Turtle Rock, we're going to head west on this Dark World Death Mountain. The only enemies up here are three Lynels. Uh, they are a lot easier than the ones in Breath of the Wild. They just kind of go down like any other enemy. So just run across this bridge, and then once you poke that line, I'll just back up and move around the peg. Uh, once you get to Ganon's Tower, and as long as you have all seven crystals, Zelda will come out and tell you that the seven maidens will use their powers to break the barrier. When the barrier is broken, the staircase that you see at the top of the screen there will descend down to the ground, granting you access to the dungeon. Ganon's Tower, in my opinion, or the, a link to the past version of Ganon's Tower, is probably the best dungeon ever created in video games uh, for a lot of reasons. I would like to do a video on it at some point, but I just think it's so creative. So there's two ways to get through this. We can either go through the right, which is more focused on combat challenges, or we can go to the left, which is more focused on puzzles, and this one's a little bit easier. They both lead to the same place, though. So in this first room, you want to bonk onto the torch to bring down the key. In the next room, you want to lift up this pot to get another key, take out the hammer, smack down these two laughing pegs, push the brick to open the door. I'm going to show you a little speedrunning trick. You can just bonk into this brick and hold down on the D-pad until you're safe on the platform. Hook shot over, and then hook shot over again. And you want to take out the cane of Samaria, and once you have the switch uh, as blue, you want to lay down a brick, shoot it to change the switch to red, because that's going to bring down these red floor tiles. Put another brick down here, get the key, and shoot the brick, and then that will lower the blue switches. And then you want to stand on this uh, blue floor switch to get some invincibility frames to walk over to this warp pad. From here, I'm going to show you another speedrunning trick. You can bonk into this wall and then just go right over the fire snake. Otherwise, you can just wait for it. Push that brick forward to reveal a chest, hook shot over, get another key, and open this door. From here, we just have to do a little bit of warping around. So just uh, hit these tiles in the same way that I am. Uh, you cannot uh, mess this up, really. You'll There's different ways to warp around, but uh, you will never be stuck or get like warped back to the beginning of the dungeon or anything. That doesn't happen. Uh, what you're supposed to do here is hit this warp tile and then hit another one right after it, but you do this little trick where you take intentional damage and you just skip right over the, the tile. So the real way to get around this area is to use the Ether Medallion to reveal the path, the invisible pathway here. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a speedrunning trick that makes this trivial and it's very easy to do. So you want to come up here and lift up one of these pots, walk onto the invisible pathway, and then bonk onto the other pot. That does not work on the Game Boy Advance version because the Butter Sword breaks pots. But on the SNES version, um, this will always work. So just bonk on that pot, makes it really, really easy, and saves you a lot of magic uh, energy. All right, so bomb this floor, and then you will drop down a level and you'll have to fight the Armos Knights from the Eastern Palace again. But if you have the Silver Arrows, they will die with one hit. Otherwise, you will need to use three regular arrows each. The added challenge here in the Ganon's Tower version is that the floor is an ice skating rink, but as long as you have Silver Arrows, it's really, really quick. So this middle chest here has the big key. The other ones have bombs and arrows, but the big key is the only thing we need here. So get that, leave the room, and then go through this doorway here. Optionally, there are fairies in this secret room here. They are uh, in the middle of the room with a pit. So if you're trying to catch these with the uh, with the bug catching net, you will just have to kind of wait for them to disperse. All right, so head upstairs and into the room with the big chest. And then you want to open that for the red mail. This halves your damage from the blue mail, which is great. Um, and just so you know where this is, I just kind of went down here. I kind of couldn't even remember. This is the same room with the invisible pathway, but we're done with this section. So now that we have the red mail, we can warp back to the beginning of the dungeon and now head upstairs. We will begin ascending the rest of the tower. All right, so in this room, there are some mimics. There's a bad fairy, uh, but what we are most concerned about is opening the door to the south. And the way you open this door is to push down the brick right here. Pushing that down opens the door, and then you just want to keep tossing pots using the boomerang and uh, just making your way down. In this room, there are two red mimics. These take either one silver arrow or two regular arrows to kill. So you do have to kind of navigate these tektites 
uh, and just play it safe. Try to shoot arrows, like thread the needle, you know, really use your pixels. But once they are down, the door is open again. And then in this room, there are two more mimics with a couple of Beemos enemies. These two mimics can be uh, quite frustrating to deal with, but as long as you are good at sort of like snaking around blocks as you're shooting arrows, it, it's not that bad. All right, so in this next room, we can just dash right through. And then the quick way through this room is to just jump off this ledge here, hit the crystal switch, lift up the middle pot to reveal a floor switch to open the door. And then once the tektites uh, are mostly behind the bricks, hit the crystal switch again to lock them up. Here, head back upstairs and then go through the door that you just opened. And this room in particular is one of the many reasons why I think this is the greatest dungeon in video games. The only way to get across this optional ledge, this is completely optional, but the only way to do this is to bonk on these bricks. I think you might be able to plant a bomb and bomb jump over, but bonking on the bricks is really the real way to do that. And I just think that is so unbelievably creative to kind of force a player who has never had to do that before to figure that out. To get back over, you can either hook shot or just bonk back over. Uh, that's completely optional. I just wanted to showcase that in case you're wondering how to actually open that crack. All right, so heading upstairs, where there's a couple combat challenges now. Um, each one gets progressively harder. This first room just has conveyor belts and four enemies. This next room has uh, conveyor belts as well as a Beemos and some red Stalfos. So if you slash your sword at these things and you do not kill them, uh, they will throw a bone at you. So you want to try to kill them with pots. In this next room, we have more conveyor belts as well as these blue guys and another Beemos. So now there's two Beemos, conveyor belts. This room is just a mess. Uh, these are some of the toughest combat challenge rooms uh, in the game. This, this top level of the dungeon is really just a huge gauntlet, room after room after room of tough combat challenges that just really just get progressively harder. Uh, up until you fight the Lan Mola. And the last room of this dungeon before the boss is insane as well. All right, so in this next room, now they're finally out of there. It's an ice skating rink, conveyor belts, tektites, and Beemos. So just deal with that as best you can. In this one, we have a fireball spitting fountain in the top left, a Beemos in the top right, uh, fireball circling these pots, and then a uh, red enemy there. And the combat challenge is mostly over. You can sprinkle that pinwheel with magic dust and... Uh, or magic powder turn into a regular fairy. Now we're gonna fight the land mola again. If you have silver arrows, one shot will kill these things. Um, make sure you remember that when you're fighting the last land mola, it will shoot eight rocks instead of four. And there is a uh, fireball spitting fountain in the bottom left corner. All right, so now that we've done all that, feel free to lift up these pots for some uh, refills. And then this next room has an invisible floor. I'm gonna show you the quick way to get through this room very, very quickly. Take out the Cane of Samaria, walk to about the middle, and then fire a brick, and it will kill all those whiz robes. I'll show you here the actual path. So, there it is. And then you want to just follow that path and exit the room. This room here, you could just uh, charge across the bridge with the Pegasus boots, no big deal. In this room, there are three more whiz robes, or four more whiz, whiz robes, rather. Um, there is a quick way to kill these guys using the Cane of Samaria. I'm not very good at it. So just make sure you avoid the tech tight. Uh, pay attention to which conveyor belts you're on because they are going two different directions. Um, but once you kill all four, uh, the, the door will open and you can proceed. All right, so now that all four are done and we have uh, full health, we're going to head into this room now. Once again, it's just another bridge. Just charge over it. Not a big deal. This room, you have to light four torches and I'll show you the order that you want to do them in. I recommend using the lamp for the first three and then the fire rod for the fourth. Uh, if you do not... Uh, have enough magic to do this, you will have to warp back to the, either the beginning of the dungeon and find a full magic decanter, or start the dungeon over when you leave and come back with full magic. Uh, as a real kick to the gut, there is a magic refill in this room. You really probably could use it in the previous room, but you will need it anyway. So in this room here, there are four more torches. I recommend using the fire rod in this room. You want to light these four torches. Uh, be careful of the collapsing floor. All right, and then once in this room, there is a key that you can get from one of these Helmosaurs. Um, at this point, we have a bunch of keys, so it's really not necessary, but we're going to get it anyway, just in case you're running low or something. Still want to show you where to get the necessary keys. All right, so in this room, we want to plant a bomb, throw it onto the conveyor belt, and then try to line it up to where the bomb explodes uh, near the crack in the wall. So third time's a charm here. Got to watch out for the tech ties. There's a small one and a big one. Let the big one pass. 
and then move around it. In this room, if you don't have enough keys, just keep hitting the crystal switches, and there's a key in that chest there, but we're good to go. And we have the final Light World boss, which is Muldorm. If you have the Butter Sword, this is uh, trivial, because you will kill him before he gets to go fast. So if you have the, the Gold Sword, it's only two hits. If you have the Red Sword, I think it's uh, four hits. And you will have to deal with him moving very quickly. So, once Muldorm is dead, you want to hookshot over to this chest, and then you can push these blocks in this order. And now we're going to proceed to the last hard room, which is filled with conveyor belts, uh, sort of like bouncy things, Helmosaurus, Tech Tights, Ice Skating Rink. This room is terrible in all manner of speaking. <laughs> it's really, really bad. If you have the uh, Magic Cape or the Cane of Birna, you can feel free to use that and just kind of walk right up. But it can be a really challenging room. All right. Now we're going to fight the boss of Ganon's Tower, which is not Ganon. Instead, it is Aghanim again. So... This version of Aghanim is a little bit easier than the previous one. He's going to split into three, and the ghost ones will always shoot orbs, but the real one that we need to uh, fire the orbs back at, the real one has the ability to still shoot the blue balls, so that can be pretty rough. So you want to just keep lining yourself up to where the ghosts will shoot orbs at you, and then you are in a good position to where you can bounce those orbs back to the real Aghanim. Bouncing ores back to the ghosts will do nothing. It'll go right through them. It's not worth the effort. The good news is, is that in this version of Aghanim, he will never do the lightning bolt ability. Uh, this, that would just be really unfair, and there's not enough room in the arena for that to work and you'd be able to ever dodge it. So, yeah, just uh, keep that in mind. So we're just going to keep waiting for our opportunities here. Uh, but they will come, and then once you hit him enough times, he will die, and then... Instead of being warped to the Dark World like you were the first time, uh, or maybe being warped to the Light World to, to be the opposite of the first time, the one scripted time where you can use the Flute in the Dark World is right here. And the reason for that is because Ganon will fly away as his bat form, which never really shows up again in the Zelda universe, now that I'm thinking about it, but... Yeah, he's going to drop into the Golden Pyramid, and then the Duck will drop you off right behind him, and then you can drop into this hole and fight Ganon. But that's another guide. That's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. You can also join my community Discord server. The link for that is in the video description below. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda, a link to the past, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.